Well, I really wasn't interested in dinosaurs at all. I was working down in South America, working on the taphonomy of fossil whales, and I'd been working on that for several years when a friend of mine asked me if I would be interested in looking at some dinosaurs. And I really wasn't very interested at first because I had plenty to do, but the ranch owner took me out onto his property and he drove his pickup up onto a butte and told us to get out. But I couldn't stand on the ground because it was covered with dinosaur bones. So I could not stop myself from trying to preserve that data because I know we're not making any more of those data. And every year these bones are being washed away and lost to science. My name is Art Chadwick and I am director of the Dinosaur Science Museum and Research Center here at Southwestern Adventist. We have here a collection of over 20,000 dinosaur bones that we've accumulated over the last 20 years working in Wyoming and this is the official repository for the bones. Each year we bring back a couple of thousand bones and then we spend the year processing these bones and preparing them and doing scientific research, publishing papers. It occurred to us as we began to learn about 3D printers, we needed to be able to print bones so that we could reconstruct some of the animals that we're finding, especially as we began to find whole animals. Two years ago, we found a more or less intact Thessalosaurus, which is a small plant-eating dinosaur. That was a big breakthrough for us. But when it came to doing something with it in the museum, it turns out that assembling the whole thing would have been destructive. We would have lost bone. So that seemed like an ideal time for us to begin to operate in 3D printing. And that's where the Gigabot came in. So we were able to print the entire Thessalosaurus. We kept it busy day and night for a long time, printing out all those bones. Several hundred hours for the, the whole print. Gigabot was our choice from the very beginning because that's the biggest printer that we could get that would allow us to make some of the bones that are fairly large with ease. We didn't need perfect replication. What we needed was representation, and the Gigabot does that ideally. We bought the machine and brought it home, and of course, the first thing we printed was two giant jaws of a Triceratops, which took 47 hours. That was a major feat of an out-of-the-box machine. 3D printing to me is much better than casting because the thing that 3D printing can do is enable you to replace lost pieces or missing pieces. If we have a left femur, for example, we don't have a right, we can just mirror the left femur and make a right. And really, I have found that I prefer the not perfect printing to having a perfect replication anyway. If I made every vertebra the same using a casting technique, it would be very obvious on the specimen. But with the 3D printing, there's enough variation in the surface so that we can get every bone looking different. One-off casting is very expensive, whereas 3D printing is nickels and dimes. You could 3D print an image for a dollar, but it might take you $50 worth of materials to make a mold for that object. There's $250 worth of latex on that specimen right there. I looked at a lot of other machines on the way, and I am very, very happy with a Gigabot. And so far, we haven't even plumbed the limits of the machine. I haven't had to print anything as two pieces yet. We got the right machine, 